Hi, everybody. Let's talk about food additives. Now, we know uh, there's about 4,000 food additives on the market today, and we also know that they really haven't been tested. As far as my references, where I'm getting the information from, again, it's down, down at the bottom of the, the article. So do me a favor, take a look at the text below because I go a little bit more in depth than I'm going to do off the top of my head. So we know that there's all these food additives. Are they doing anything to us? Well, we know that in some of the cases there are, and I'll discuss them during this video. But a lot of these food additives, food additives, we're not certain about. The studies are too small. And honestly, when it comes to human studies, it's really hard to make an association between a food additive and, and what it's doing to our health. And the reason for that is there's just too many variables. We're not sure. So let's start off. MSG, right? You've had Chinese food before and you hear, oh, I get a headache from Chinese food. So we know that MSG can cause headaches and that's pretty much been proven. Well, there's also an association of perhaps metabolic diseases. Metabolic diseases is a condition, it's kind of like a pre-diabetes that perhaps it will increase your chance of developing diabetes. So MSG has been associated with that as well. Now, it won't always say MSG or monosodium glucate. It, there'll be a number of different names. Do me a favor, take a look at the text below as far as ingredients and what to look for in you know on the label itself so that's one um, ingredient that I would suggest you staying away from especially if you're very sensitive to it if you're prone to developing headaches maybe you want to reconsider you know having MSG in your food all right another um, food additive sodium nitrate we use it in bacon processed meats it's used basically as a preservative it can also help you know like if you ever seen bacon that's pinkish so it helps preserve that color pink now the problem with sodium nitrate again it's been associated with heart disease and for a number of years now it's actually been associated with gastric cancer so sodium nitrate is another food additive that you may want to consider you know holding well from I do bacon once in a while, but it's not every day. It's not even, you know, every week. I really do try to refrain from doing it. It's a treat. So once in a while, have deli meats. But personally, I think you're better off just taking your own chicken, a rotisserie, um, you know, roasted chicken, roasting it yourself. And you, you put on the herbs, um, whatever rubs you want to do, and then having that throughout the week. Right? It's a, that's a great deli meat rather than going to the deli counter and ordering foods that have a lot of sodium in them. All right, So that's MSG, high fructose corn syrup. Well, and this is a controversial topic. Some researchers will say it's just like sugar. It doesn't do anything. Where there's other studies to show that high fructose corn syrup can actually be increasing the rate of obesity. And we know that the rate of obesity here in the United States, it's pretty high, right? What happened? What happened to us? Why are we so different than we were 30 years ago? Are we exercising less? Is it all these, um, you know, the phones and, and uh, electronic equipment that we just sit around? We're not exercising. We don't, it's our diet. We do a lot of fried food. Um, uh, the type of jobs that we have, perhaps sitting around all the time. Is it that or is it something more? Is it the food additives, you know, that we're exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis? So I think most of the obesity in the United States does have to do with diet and exercise, but I do think that if you took two people with the same genetic makeup and you exposed them to different things, it, people respond differently. Maybe their the metabolic, um, you know, their, their makeup is different. Perhaps I'm more sensitive to corn syrup than, than somebody else. So if I'm eating the corn syrup, I'm more out to, you know, I'm more prone to gain weight than perhaps my sister would be. So I think there's a lot of variables. Definitely more studies need to be done, but there is a reason why we're heavier today than we were 30 years ago. And I don't think it's just diet and exercise. I think even 30 years ago, there were people that, you know, didn't work much, didn't exercise much. Um, and they did have a very like sedentary lifestyle, uh, but they weren't heavy. So Corn syrup is definitely one that I would avoid. I think that there's just not enough studies to show that it's safe. I think, you know, manufacturers use it because it's a cheaper way to go, right? The corn is cheaper than sugar, so the manufacturers use the high fructose corn syrup. Carrigan. Carrigan, it's, and whatever I say is down in the text below. Carrigan is a, um, it's used in foods. What it does is it's a thickener. So the problem with it is that it's thought to, um, you know, perhaps cause some bowel irritation and even ulcers. Now we know that the autoimmune diseases are a higher rate today than they were 30 years ago. So why is that? Is it all genetics or is it something that we're exposing ourselves to in our food and our diet or perhaps even environmental, right? A lot of my courses that I offer in this course, it has to do with, you know, chemical exposure and perhaps what they're doing to, to us. So, um, 
that would be another one that I stay away from. You can find those, you know, you have to, it's going to be in the ingredient list, but something like almond milk, something that's thicker. Um, sometimes like salad dressings, the ones that are bottled that you find um, not in the refrigerator, well, even in the refrigerated section. The bottom line is it's a food thickener. So any foods that you're eating that, that are thicker, take a look at the ingredient list. So carrageen is, is another one that I would stay away from. Sodium benzoate it is a preservative, right? Some studies say it's safe, but other studies are unfortunately, say that when sodium benzoate is mixed with uh, orange juice, that one of the derivatives or uh, benzene is, for, is formed. So what's the problem with benzene? Well, we know that that's a carcinogen. So it could be that some of these preservatives are interacting with other foods and then, you know, causing a problem for us or increasing our, our the risk of cancer. So that's something else I would um, avoid. Trans fat. We've heard a lot about trans fat over the years. I'm sure you guys know about it, but I have to include it in the food additives, right? It's it's a type of fat that's been manipulated, right? It's uh, hydrogenated, and the reason for that is so that the sh that um, the shelf life. Certain oils don't have a long shelf life, so pr to preserve that. And also make it more, um, like, how do I say it, where it doesn't go rancid in the heat, they hydrogenate it, they manipulate it so that the shelf life is longer. Well, the problem with trans fats, again, is that it increases our chance of heart disease. So again, um, cookies, really a lot of foods. I know a lot of the manufacturers are now getting away from trans fat, but, you know, they have the nutrition um, the nutrition guide on the foods that we buy. Do me a favor, turn the label around and, and take a look, right? Just take a look at what's on the label itself so that you know what you're buying, right? And try to stay away from trans fat. Food coloring, well, a lot of controversy on this as well. Does food coloring increase the risk of attention deficit in children? The bottom line is we don't know. But um, I, have, I do have a reference from a really good source, the American Academy of Pediatrics, that suggests that food coloring does, and not all the food coloring, but some of the food coloring may very well increase our risk or the children's risk of attention deficit. So if we know that, if we you know, perhaps change a child's diet where they're not getting food coloring at all, what's the sense? Does it do anything? It may make it look more appealing, maybe more fun colors, but if it's not good for our health, why risk it, right? Sulfites. Problem with sulfites, and this is according to the um, Cleveland Clinic, that if you have asthma, it's um, it's been shown to increase the risk of asthma. So that's another one that we want to you know stay away from. These are just some of the food additives. Remember, there's over 4,000 food additives on the market today. So again, be very familiar with what what is in the food that you're eating. Uh, I would definitely stick with you know fresh vegetables. Make and again, you know, I'll get into um, pesticides later. But that's the, the best way to go. Frozen, flash frozen foods are a good way to go. There's no preservatives. But rather than doing canned, rather than doing packaged foods, um, I believe that fresh and frozen is a safer way to go. All right, I'll see you on the next lecture.